Hey everyone, Robert here, writer and creator of Tower 4. I want to say thank you for bearing with us. We know production has been kind of slow for Tower 4. Um, we're not releasing episodes as fast as we once were, but that's because we have a lot of stuff going on on the business side of things and in our personal lives, and it's just kind of uh, slowed production a lot. But we're trying our hardest to get this stuff out, and uh, we just want to say thank you for bearing with us. If you like Tower 4 and you want to listen to some of the other productions that we produce here at 7Lamb, uh, you can go to 7Lamb.com and find all of our podcasts there. We have like eight other audio dramas and like three or four different nonfiction shows. So you can check those out. Maybe those will tide you over as we continue to work on Tower 4. Also, as you may know, we've been working with a company called Voyage Media uh, to produce other podcasts. And right now we're working on Fever Dreams, which is an anthology, pulpy type of show, uh, different genres. Every time they release, every new episode is either a thriller or a horror or sci-fi. Uh, we've been working with Voyage Media to produce these episodes, and they've been coming out really well. And we're uh, excited about the new ones coming up. And to find all the episodes that they have out right now, you can go to Fever Dreams Podcast. Dot com And there's a lot of episodes out already with plenty more to come. So definitely check those out. Uh, Voyage Media also already has a couple of shows out right now. You can check those out. All of this stuff hopefully can tide you over as we uh, really push forward and try to get uh, season two wrapped up of Tower 4. And hopefully come season three, we'll be a lot quicker with the releases. Uh, we have a lot of stuff brewing behind the scenes. Anyways, thanks for listening and enjoy the next episode of Tower 4. Seven Lamb Productions presents Tower Four, Season Two, Episode Eight Trapped. dark and cold in here. I sat up on the steep concrete ramp. I couldn't see a thing until I ran the beam of the flashlight over the wall and rock ceiling above me. This is insane. I grabbed my backpack and flung it over my shoulder. Before moving, I ran the flashlight over the wall behind me. Solid concrete. Then I moved the light to the ramp. I was standing at a weird angle, keeping my balance. This ramp was pretty steep. I took my time heading down. I couldn't believe I was in here. Although I didn't know where here was. Eventually I hit the bottom of the ramp, which leveled out into a large empty chamber. It reminded me of some kind of Abandoned airport hangar with its arched ceiling of steel girders. It was cold. I guided the beam along the wall to my right, taking everything in. There wasn't much here. Two more of those small carts in the corner, but one looked to have a flat tire. No matter. There were two stacks of tires by some shelves to the left. In the adjacent corner, some steel tubing and large wooden crates. The center of the room was empty, but as I continued my way around, I saw two large steel doors situated directly across from the ramp. Across the doors was the painted eye, where the doors met created the line down the center. Huh. Above the eye, in the upper center of each door, was a painted number four. Four? Is that for... Tower 4? No. It couldn't be. Could it? I was far from my tower. Hmm. I walked past the doors to the other side of the room. More crates and pipes. In the corner on the other side of the ramp was a pyramid of unlabeled barrels and an empty shipping container. Jesus. What is this place? I pointed the flashlight up as I made my way around the room again. Steel girders, vents, and two cameras. 
Oh, shit. I startled, but the cameras were facing straight down. Were they on? Didn't seem like it. But just to be safe, I kept my distance, staying closer to the walls. If that even mattered at this point. I did one more pass over with the flashlight and went for the doors. There was a small metal box with a glass casing to the left of the doors. The casing covered two large buttons, both black. Well, why not? I pressed the top button. Okay, I tried the other one. Really? Nothing. Is the power out in here? If it was, that probably meant the cameras were off, which at first seemed like good news, but in actuality was bad news because it meant I was stuck. <sighs> Great. Now what? What do you mean by now what? I mean, what do I do? Do I sell her things, her house? I don't want to be here. The only person I talk to anymore is Ricky, and that is once or twice a month at most. I'm ready to get out. I have nothing, and I just feel... stuck. Stuck? Trapped. Well, Mike, I'm not really here to provide advice. No, no. You're here to listen. <laughs> uh, that's, that's right. Listen and help you to navigate. Ah. So, when you say you're ready to get out, you mean out of your home or out of the city? All of it. Out of my home, the city, out of the state. I, I need something new. Something new? You mean like a change of scenery? I mean a restart. <sighs> I mean, hell, I was tired of my job anyway. Getting fired might have been the best thing for me. It could be, sure. Life's all about perspective. Yeah, they wouldn't give me the time I needed. You're a smart guy. You'll be able to find something else. t and was a shit company anyway. And with the time that you took, you were able to spend more time caring for your mother. Sure, not that it helped. Maybe not in the sense that you hoped for. But don't you feel you got some closure? And I'm sure it made her feel good, don't you think? I don't know. She didn't really talk much near the end. But that was much later. Not much. But sure, yeah, I get what you're saying. And even after she was in the hospital, you still visited her there often. That's what you told me. I did, but near the end... Near the end she was... I fought back tears. <sighs> you must think I'm crazy, huh? Mike, I told you before. I don't use the term crazy. It took a while and I was super skeptical at first, but here I was. Finally, opening up to Dr. Browning. <sighs> Mike, a change of scenery may be good for you. I just want to pack everything up, sell the house, and drive until I'm sick of driving. That's a common feeling. A means of escape after a traumatic event. So you hear this kind of stuff often? Everyone copes with trauma in their own way. But this feeling you're experiencing, it's nothing new. So I'm coping? I think so. Yes. I know you're not about giving advice or your opinions, but do you think it's dumb? <laughs> Mike, I think you need to do what you need to do. This is our third session, and you've hinted about leaving Livermore each time. If moving to a new place seems the right decision for you, then maybe that's what you need to do. You're not worried about losing a client? <laughs> no. And I provide calls and online sessions in case you are interested. Granted, there are laws and rules prohibiting out-of-state therapy. Really? Yes, but there are loopholes and workarounds. I just wanted to put that out there. Oh. But we'll save that for another time. Good. Because I'm already overwhelmed as it is. I'm sure with everything, it seems like a lot. It doesn't seem like it is. It is. Then may I make a suggestion? Maybe it would help to formulate some kind of plan. Yeah? Don't you think? But I'm worried if I do that, then I'm locked into those plans. You don't have to be. That would be your choice. Right, but if I say, look for another job, get an apartment, or buy another house, then that's it. What's it? That's my life, then. So you don't want anything concrete? 
Then maybe you can formulate a plan that's more open-ended. Start small. Start small? When you start small, challenges don't seem so big. They're easier to overcome. So, like what? <laughs> Why? I mean, that's up to you, isn't it? Yeah. The theologian Desmond Tutu once said, There is only one way to eat an elephant. A bite at a time. So maybe start with first just organizing your mom's things. And what if I don't want anything? Then you don't want it. But go through it. See what can be sold, what can be thrown out, what can be donated, and so on. Just try to get it organized. Is that supposed to keep me here? <laughs> no. But maybe while you're doing that, you'll figure out the next steps. The funeral. What you want to do with the house. Where you maybe want to go. What I really want is to write. You've mentioned that during each of our sessions, too. Maybe I'll have time now. Well, not now, now, but soon. <sighs> I have way too much to do now. Yes, but stagger it. One thing at a time. You'll be surprised how much you accomplish. Then- Then writing can be my prize. <laughs> you certainly have a way of phrasing things. Uh, says the elephant man. <laughs> I wish I could take credit for that. I'm just tired of feeling trapped. But you're not trapped, Mike. It may feel like that right now, but you're not. You're not trapped. But I was trapped. <sighs> I was looking at the two carts in the corner. One had a flat, but I didn't notice until now that the other one was missing a tire altogether. It was jacked up and resting on a cement block. The carts were a little longer than a golf cart, with the back extension appearing to be for cargo. They were also sleeker, with a more futuristic look. I examined both, but other than a couple of folded up tarps and a lug wrench, they were empty. Damn. I'd climbed into the one with the flat tire. There was a dark green button by the steering wheel. Wasn't sure if it would start up, but I still gave it a shot. Still no luck. Maybe I needed a key. Where were you gonna drive anyway, Mike? An hour passed as I explored the room inch by inch. There was absolutely nothing of any use. It was like the place was abandoned long ago, yet I saw them drive out of here. They must have come from behind those steel doors. The problem was the buttons by the door didn't work. Nothing worked. In fact, I wasn't even being cautious around the cameras anymore. Screw it. <sighs> I mean, seriously, screw it. I don't know if I necessarily condone that type of attitude, but... If it's what you're looking for... I'm looking for peace and quiet. For your writing? I can't do it here. I can't do it in that house. There's too much. I told you, I'm exhausted and overwhelmed. I've been ready to go. I'm aware, and... It seems to me you've gone through the necessary steps. Sold what I could, donated the rest. And aren't you feeling better? No. Why do you suppose that is? Because I'm still here. I thought you mentioned a month ago that you didn't want to get another job. You didn't want to feel bogged down or feel trapped. I didn't. I did it all for shits and giggles. I must have sent out hundreds of resumes and applications. I mean... I went through every damn online job site. And I'm not dumb, Dr. Browning. I know that my inheritance will only take me so far. It's not even like she left me with a lot. So when you filled these applications out, were they all out of state? Of course. I wasn't lying when I said I wanted out. I figured I'd throw a bunch out there and see what sticks. And normally I'd be pretty upset only hearing back from a couple of companies, but hell, this might be the perfect job for me. You think so? Of course. I've done all the bullshit, now I can, well, now I can write, I can work on my book. Have you reached back to them? Not yet. I only received their response two days ago, though. I wanted to come to our session first, talk it out. Well, why do you think you need to do that? What do you mean? Well, you seem happy about it. Why did you feel the need to talk to me first? Because I... I... I thought about it a moment. Well, because I'm scared. This is where I grew up. This is where all my friends are, or, or this is where I've lived my whole life. I guess I kind of feel stupid saying this, but I'm nervous about going to a new place as much as I want to. That's not an uncommon feeling. It's a big step. Right, but I don't want to feel like I'm running away. 
Well, let's look at it differently. It is possible you're not running away from something as much as running towards something. You have such a way with words. <laughs> it's all the schooling. There is one other thing I'm kind of nervous about. And uh, what's that? I've never been a fire lookout before. Hell, it's been a long time since I've even been in the woods. And why do you think they picked you then? Shouldn't they look for someone with some kind of outdoor experience? Not that I mean to say you aren't capable. No, I know. I I really don't know why they responded to me. At first, I thought it was a scam, but then I talked to one of the rangers, did a Google search of the park. And? It seemed legit, but still not sure why they picked me. Must have been something. Eh, maybe they just need people. It was also weird because I went through my applications and job submissions and I couldn't find a record of a fire lookout application. But I did use several different email accounts and I was day drinking the day I sent everything out. Maybe I just lost track. I did nearly finish a bottle of single malt scotch at the time, but I kept that all to myself. Mike, do you think sometimes you're a little too hard on yourself? No. You don't think sometimes you don't take time to smell the roses? You sound like my ex. <laughs> Is this Melanie, or Sarah, or someone else? Sarah. I don't have time to be happy. Not yet. I told you, Dr. Browning, writing will be my reward. So until I'm working on my book, I won't be happy. Well, seems like your mind is already set then. It is. Well, you do need to make sure until that goal, you still find some time to focus on yourself. That's something you said you struggled with, right? Yeah. Well, you have the time now. So make sure you take some time here and there. For yourself. Otherwise, you may get that feeling of being trapped again. Okay. Amber, you copy? Amber. Hours had passed and I was still in here. I couldn't believe my current predicament. What was your plan, Mike? Really? This was so stupid. Amber, you copy? I heard a few crackles over the radio. I expected Amber to say something, but she didn't. She also didn't respond to my calls. Being underground most likely blocked my signal. I got up and made my way around the room again. The cameras definitely weren't working. Someone would have shown up by now if they were. Amber, are you there? Hello? As I walked around the large chamber, I continued to think about my sessions with Dr. Browning. It took a little while to get comfortable around him, but eventually I did. And eventually I opened up, but why was I thinking so much about him now? What the... The large steel doors were opening. I was reminded of my dreams, and all these doors looked different. I couldn't help but wonder if that thing was behind them. I was standing out in the open right now as the doors continued to part, but inside was only another set of steel doors about 20 yards from the first set. Inside, flickering fluorescent bulbs high above. The second set of doors had no eye carving, but the number four appeared again on each door. The doors stopped, but now... Holy shit. The boulders above the ramp they were moving to. I ran to the corner of the room with the carts. I dove behind the nearest one and hid. I peeked out just in time to see the two men return. They drove to the second set of steel doors and stopped. They were chatting, but I couldn't hear them over the loud rumbling. But I slowly crept out and made my way along the dark wall sticking through the shadows. I wanted to see what they were up to. The boulders stopped. The light from outside illuminated the center of the room, meeting with the light from the fluorescent bulbs. I can't believe this shit. You just upset because you didn't think the trap was enough. Tell me it makes sense. None of it makes sense. 
but the guy obviously isn't bright. None of them are. Well, there you go. I could barely hear them from this far away, but it was the same two men I'd seen in the woods the other night. I crept through the large room towards the steel door, sticking to the darkness. Although if they had just looked back, they may have seen me. Just get the door, man. The tall, muscular man stepped out, hit a button on the wall, and jumped back in. Just be happy. About what? We got him. We got him? Just then, the doors behind them, but in front of me, began to slide shut. Did they just say they got him? Shit. I didn't know what to do. If I followed, they would definitely see me. Holy shit! I noticed a lump in the back of their cart, an arm sticking out from under a gray tarp. Jerry's arm. We got him. How? The doors were almost completely shut, the light from the fluorescence disappearing. Just then, Jerry's fingers twitched. He was alive. What the? Oh shit! I didn't realize the boulder door above was also shutting now. It was halfway closed and I was so far away. Not only that, but I didn't have my backpack with me. It was over by the carts. I needed my backpack. The radio, the flashlight, the bow. I ran for it. I quickly grabbed it and spun around, the outside light only covering a few feet of the floor inside. Hurry, Mike, unless you want to be trapped in here again. Why the hell was this room so large? I reached the ramp to see that the boulders had almost completely covered the opening. The cone of light quickly disappearing. Come on! Can I make it? Come on! I ran up the steep incline, pushing as hard as I could. The gap was only three feet wide now. Shit, shit, shit! I was just about to reach the opening. No! I dove to the ground and crawled forward, but it was no use. It closed. Shit! And once again, I was trapped. I didn't even try to make contact now. Odds are Amber was trying to reach me, but there was no way to hear her. I did another pass around the room, but still found nothing. Now I just paced, trying to come up with a plan. How the hell was I going to get out of here? Hours had passed. Fear was starting to set in. I'd missed my chance before. At least the guys in the cart were out there looking for Jerry when I first entered, but now... That they had already returned and got him. Would they come back this way? I had made my camp in the back of the flat tire cart. I ate earlier, but not much. I wasn't really hungry. thought about taking a nap, but I wasn't really tired right now either. I couldn't believe they got Jerry. I wonder how they did that. Jerry had been able to avoid them for such a long time. But somehow. The hell was that? What was that noise? I made my way to the steel doors. I put my hand flat against the left one. Another distant boom. I could feel the vibration ever so slightly. That can't be good. Hmm. I pressed my ear to the metal door. I could be able to hear anything. But still, I stood there. My eyes closed. But now there was nothing. No sounds, no vibration. I couldn't believe what was happening, where I was. Never in a million years would I think anything like this would happen to me. Once again, I thought back to my sessions with Dr. Browning. Oh, I was so excited about this job because not only was it in a completely new state, but I felt it would lead me to more writing. It would lead me to happiness. I climbed into the cart, put the flashlight on my lap, and grabbed my trail mix. I sat thinking about all the mysteries, about Jerry. Then about before the tower, I thought about my last session with Dr. Browning. And it looks like we're out of time. Oh. Okay. Listen, Mike, I, I know you have your plans, and it looks like you're set with the new job. But I would like to mention again that I provide over the phone and online counseling if you're ever interested to partake. Well, I doubt I'll have time with the new job, plus I'm not expecting much in the way of internet access. It's a part-time job though, right? 
You'll be done come fall. Apparently, yeah. Well, maybe we can pick up then. Or if you'd rather, I could possibly set you up with someone closer. Send you some recommendations, depending on the area and my contacts. No, I wouldn't mind trying again with you, but... Well, what if the outdoors changes me? <laughs> How so? I don't know, but it seems like months alone in a tower with nothing but my writing and nature may have some impact. It'll definitely have an impact on you. And by no means must you keep making appointments with me. But you have my number. Thank you. One more thing, Mike. I know we're out of time, but I would like to make mention of this again. What? Focus on yourself. Remember the airplane analogy. I understand. And try not to get bogged down with too much, other than your riding. I'm going to be alone for months. I don't think I'll have any problems with that. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. I was getting super restless, and every hour that passed made my stomach tighten more. I had to get out of here. As big as the room was, I was starting to feel claustrophobic. How long would my flashlight last? My food? How long could I- Holy shit. The floor shook. That came from deep within the bunker. I grabbed my backpack and ran for the steel doors. I put my palms flat against them, feeling. <sighs> Damn it. Hello? Anyone there? Of course not. I was about to head back to my car, but decided to take the long way around so I could once again scan the room. This time I shined the flashlight directly on the far camera, but odds are nothing would happen. I explored the shipping container again, but besides a spider web tucked into one of the corners, I found nothing. That is until I decided to walk out of the back and look up. There was a small grate in the ceiling, not as far up as the vents. Huh. How'd I miss that? It was still high though, maybe 20-25 feet up. No way I could reach it even if I were to stand on top of the container. But maybe if I were to get the crates and stack them. They were pretty big, but empty. I don't know if it would work, but I could give it a shot. Let's see if there's something else I could use to climb. Maybe the stack of tires? I headed back to the cart, bypassing the ramp when... Holy shit! I heard her. I noticed I was standing by the ramp. <laughs> Duh, why didn't I think of that before? I went to the very top of the ramp and knelt down. Amber, you copy? Amber, you there? Ah, come on. Amber! <sighs> Jesus Christ, was that a fluke? I was as high as I could get. I even held the radio up to the bottom of the boulders, but nothing. Amber! Amber! I was starting to get frustrated. Amber! Amber, I copy. Where are you? Amber! I'm right here, Mikey. Damn, relax. Yes. I was about to respond when... Where the hell have you been? I wasn't sure what to say. Should I mention my book, say I wasn't feeling well, or should I just tell her the truth? And Mikey, why didn't you tell me about the fire? Did she just say fire? It was hard to hear her. The signal wasn't strong. Uh, what? The fire. Oh, uh, where is it? No. Well, neither do I. It should be over by Enos Lake. Wait, what? You don't see it, then how do you know there's a fire? Because Dean called me to ask about it. He said Wes and the Tower 1 spotted the smoke. He asked if you mentioned anything. I couldn't get a hold of you. Is that what you told him? Well, yeah. Because it's the truth. Where have you been? I looked down the ramp where my flashlight illuminated the cold gray concrete below. I, uh, I've been, I hesitated a moment. I've been busy. Busy with your book? Among other things. Okay, you have secrets. If you were masturbating, you could say that. I get it. Sometimes us lookouts need a release. No, I've been organizing some 
stuff and writing and... Anyway, there's a fire? Yeah. Stuff, too. Especially the tremors. Tremors? You felt those, right? Again, I wasn't sure what to say. There were an amount of them. Not that every so often out here. I felt bad because I never mentioned them to you before. But in my defense, they're few and far between. Yeah, I felt the tremors. Were you scared? No, I barely felt them. That's what I mean. He asked about you, but again, you weren't answering. Sorry about that. I sat there in the dark a moment debating. Was I really going to find a way out of here? Was I really going to climb up that vent, or would I have to wait till another cart came through? Mikey, I know I it's a lot, but are you okay? <sighs> no, I wasn't. I was trapped and I needed help. As much as I didn't want to admit it, as much as I dreaded asking for it. Fuck it. It was time to come clean about everything. Amber, I... <laughs> now what the hell was that? Oh, uh, one second. Shit, I ducked, startled by the movement of her head. The boulders were moving. Did that mean someone was coming in? Or leaving? But I didn't walk out. I actually went down the ramp thinking of Jerry. I wanted to see if the steel doors were open, but they weren't. Not fully. They were open. I stopped at the bottom of the ramp, not even worried if I was seen. Fuck all this. I wanted to know what was going on. The doors were fully open and I saw the cart. A lone man sitting behind the steering wheel. Above him, the fluorescents were off, but there was a red flashing light. The red glow illuminated the bunker before me. The cart came towards me. I quickly jumped to the side and pressed against the wall as the cart came close. The man driving was wide-eyed with terror. I saw red streaks on his clothes. He noticed me, but he didn't say a thing as he zoomed up the ramp out of sight. What the hell was that? While the second set of doors were still shut, I could hear sirens. Something happened. Mike, what's going on? I ignored her. The first set of steel doors began to slide shut. Did I chance running in and trying the button? I wanted to find out what happened to Jerry. He was alive, but they had him now. I was about to charge forward when I thought about the airplane analogy that Dr. Browning so often used with me. I noticed the boulders above were moving too. I had my backpack with me. I wouldn't make the same mistake again. Except, do I head further in or do I get the hell out? <sighs> Sorry, Jerry. This time I didn't have to run far and I made it out with ease. Damn it! Mike, where are you? Is something wrong? I plucked the radio from my waistband, ready to answer when... Oh man. What the hell? This is the exact thing I heard my first night here. Except this time there were sirens. They were faint, but I could hear them. That meant... The whispers. They were coming from the bunker. Oh, no. Shooting? I stood there in stunned silence. Something had happened and now Jerry was down there. Again. I felt a pit in my stomach. I ran away. I should have tried for the doors. I should have tried to get in there. Instead. No, Mike. If you did that and you got stuck in there, what help would you be? You were already stuck once. You were lucky to get out. You did the right thing. Except, 
I was still upset with myself. I was ready for more whispers, more gunshots, more screams, but no. Are you kidding me? Amber, you copy? Amber. Amber, you hearing this? Of course. Well, it's been a while. I stared down at the ground where I could see the tracks left by the cart. They went off to the left through a field of tall grass. Wait a second. Some of the grass had red streaks. Was it what I thought it was? I bent down to examine it. Yes, it was. Blood. It was late and I had no idea where I was. Jerry was captured and it seemed like something horrible just happened down below. I had no idea how to get back to any of the trails, let alone my tower. The only real option I had now was to follow the tracks. I grabbed my bow. Let's find out where this guy went. As I followed the matted grass, I thought about Dr. Browning. When I got out of here, would I set up another session with him? I couldn't help but smirk when I thought about what he just might say about all this. It might be the first time he actually uses the term crazy. Tower 4. Written and edited by Robert M. Lamb. Starring Jack Austin as Mike, Gina Coyle as Amber, Brian Messick as Gene. Co starring Ariel Hack, Ryan Glover, Douglas Solway, and Shoji Bixby. Music provided by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and Brett Wilkins at Facebook.com slash Wilkins Music FL. If you enjoyed Tower 4, visit 7lamb.com for more podcasts such as this one. Also, don't forget to follow 7lamb on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at 7lamb Podcasts. This has been a 7lamb production.